China's State Council promotes financial policies encouraging banks to grant more loans to boost economic growth. The U.S. Secretary of State urges India not to provoke unintended consequences in response to the deadly Mumbai attacks. Thailand resumes airlinks from Bangkok to the outside world after a week-long shutdown. And EU warships prepare for anti-piracy operations off the coast of Somalia. Good morning from Beijing and welcome to Worldwide Watch on CCTV International. I'm Li Dongying in Beijing. We begin here in the capital where Premier Wen Jiabao has presided over a state council meeting which has approved a series of monetary tools to maintain steady economic growth. Sun Jiayu has this story. China will make use of required reserves as well as interest rates and exchange rate to ensure able liquidity in the banking system. The State Council also approved measures aimed at establishing the domestic stock market, boosting bond insurance and increasing the supply of credit. A statement released listed nine ways in which financial policy would be harnessed to support the economy which is slowing sharply in response to the global downturn and slump in the domestic property market. To begin with, China will implement a monetarily easy monetary policy to promote reasonable growth in money supply and credit. It will also use various measures, including required reserves, interest rates and exchange rate, to ensure an adequate supply of liquidity in the banking system. China will also add 100 billion yuan to the loan quota for policy banks by the end of the year. Meanwhile, local governments will be urged to inject money into credit guarantee firms and provide subsidies for them. More measures will be taken to stabilize stock markets and increase bond insurance. Infrastructure bonds in particular will be encouraged. Other moves include promoting insurance related to agriculture, the buying of houses and cars, health care and pensions. China will encourage insurance companies to invest in transport, communications, energy and other infrastructure projects. In addition, China will provide new financing channels, including loans from mergers and acquisitions, real estate investment trust, private equity funds and private lending. Authorities will improve their management of foreign exchange to facilitate trade, while also upgrading its pavement system. China will increase physical support to financial institutions to help tackle problems arising from non-performing loans. And finally, China will enhance the control of risk to ensure financial security. Sun Yu, CCTV. Chinese and U.S. financial officials will meet through the Strategic Economic Dialogue in Beijing on Thursday and Friday. The talks will be the last before President-elect Barack Obama takes office in January. And there's been no confirmation that the new U.S. leader will continue this mechanism. But officials from both sides are expected to try to keep it going. Pandeng has a story. The United States is in a recession. While China has also experienced a significant economic slowdown in recent months, and the ability of the two major economies to maintain a productive relationship in spite of the financial downturn is now of global concern. In a press release on the upcoming talks issued by the U.S. Treasury Department, the strategies for managing macroeconomic risks and promoting balanced economic growth was top of the agenda. U.S. Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson said he thinks China should show them more responsibility by improving the structure of its own economy. Now is an opportunity for China to take measures to ensure sustainable, strong and balanced economic growth for its future. This, rela this means relying more on domestic demand and less on exports to drive growth. Ahead of his trip to China, Paulson also praised China's efforts in reforming its currency policy by allowing the yuan to rise by more than 20 percent against the dollar in the last three years. But many U.S. exporters still feel the move hasn't done enough to reduce their trade deficit with China. Facing domestic pressure, Paulson may handle the issue more delicately now that China is the biggest holder of U.S. Treasury bonds. 
but viewed as a whole, the series of talks seem to have struggled to find purpose, raising the question of whether U.S. President-elect Barack Obama will continue them. Paulson has warned that the sessions must produce short-term results to win continued support. Spectators say the dialogue's real concern will be more on how the relationship between China and U.S. would develop during Washington's transition of power. I think this time, if they can get more detailed、uh, agreement on energy environment, on investment protection, that means、um, how to say. This、uh, dialogue will have some far-reaching impact, and will help this mechanism dialogue、uh, be resumed in another name under the、uh, new administration. The Chinese delegation will be led by Vice Premier Wang Qishan. The talks, held twice a year, were launched in 2006 to address tensions that threatened to derail booming trade and financial issues of common concern. And on CCTV. And China's currency has strengthened against the U.S. dollar. Wednesday's rise comes after days of falls. The central parity weight now stands at 6.8502 yuan to a single dollar. Right over in Pakistan, President Asif Ali Zardari has denied his country's involvement in last week's attacks in Mumbai. His comments came after the only surviving gunman told police that he and the other nine attackers were trained in camps in Pakistan. As Zardari says, there's no evidence that the suspect is a Pakistan national, as Indian officials have claimed. But he says he's willing to help Pakistani security officials join forces with India in order to investigate the attack. India on Monday submitted a list of about 20 people to Pakistan's High Commissioner. India has demanded that Pakistan take strong action against those responsible for the attacks. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice has arrived in India at the start of an emergency tour that will also take her to Pakistan. Her aim is to ease tensions in the region. Pei Jian reports. Rice flew into New Delhi on Wednesday and delivered U.S. condolences to the Indian government. In meeting with Foreign Minister Pranab Mukherjee, Rice warned that New Delhi should ensure its response to Pakistan over the Mumbai attacks does not provoke unintended consequences. She later met Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. During the visit, the U.S. Secretary of State called for international cooperation in the investigation into the Mumbai attacks. That we expect all responsible nation, nations to participate and cooperate in、uh, bringing these perpetrators to justice, and that Pakistan has a special responsibility to do so, and to do so transparently, fully, urgently. Rice said it's too early to say who was responsible for the attack, but she did say it is clearly the kind of terrorism in which Al Qaeda participates. The Indian government has demanded that Pakistan take action against those responsible and asked that 20 suspects believed living in the country be handed over. Rice is expected to continue her tension-easing trip to Pakistan on Thursday. Page. CCTV. And thousands of people have gathered in front of Mumbai's Taj Mahal Hotel to protest against what they say were government security failures, missed warnings, and a bungled response to the devastating attacks. The protesters also held a candlelit vigil to mark one week since the attackers began the three-day killing spree. India had reportedly received a warning from the U.S. that militants were plotting a waterborne assault. On Mumbai, according to a U.S. official who spoke, on condition of anonymity, and a government intelligence familiar with the matter says India's foreign intelligence agency also had warnings as recently as September that Pakistan-based militants were plotting attacks on Mumbai. This is Worldwide Watch. These stories and more just ahead. Thailand resumes air links from Bangkok to the outside world after a week-long shutdown. And EU warships prepare for anti-piracy operations off the coast of Somalia.